Hello and welcome to my talk at the IAM Tech Day for June 2023. My name is Simon Moffat and I'm founder and analyst at an organization called the Cyber Huts and we do industry analysis and advisory work looking at all of the exciting um, trends um, and vendors which exist in the global identity and access management market. And it's a privilege to be here today. My, my presentation is, is going to take us a little bit into the future. I want to take a little bit of a, a guesstimate, if you like, as, as to what identity may look like in the next five or six years or so, which is always a little bit of a um, exciting challenge. Clearly things um, change continually, be that um, technology or people process um, and, and all sorts of different external factors. But we've done a bit of research at the cyber hut um, investigating some emerging trends technology trends and organizational trends and we've essentially been asking our community what they may think may happen over the next five or plus years and i want to share some of that research with you today to maybe give you some some pointers and some insight into perhaps how your organization may view identity for the next five years or so Um, Cyber Hut, um, we are a, um, a global industry analyst firm. We, we, we do various different um, um, products, if you like, to, to help inform both the buy side um, and practitioner communities to understand the global identity and security markets. We, we have a, an IAM squared vendor analysis map where we track over 50 different vendors in the identity space. We run a podcast called The Week in Identity um, where we try and take a, a analyst view of, of all of the um, identity events and trends that have been occurring uh, recently. And then we also have a, a thing called the IAM Radar, which is a continually updated um, sort of newsletter intelligence report looking at all of the different vendors in the identity space and then providing a bit of um, insight and analyst commentary into those areas. And obviously, we also do things like advisory and inquiry work as well. And I want to really try and share some of, of our research that we have been working on over the last sort of six to 12 months to try and try and maybe help us all try to understand a little bit around where we think the industry is heading to. So we've, we've sort of in a, I guess, a version two of identity, if you like. We, we had the first phase, if you like, the first era of identity, um, sort of the early 2000s for sort of 15, 20 years, I guess, where we had um, things like um, poor data visibility, constant credential theft, tick box compliance, poor user experiences, etc., based on a very fragmented identity infrastructure. Today, in, in 2023, we're, we're starting to see identity being much more foundational to both the business and the security sides of the organization. And we're starting to see trends like zero trust, um, identity-centric security, uh, privacy, consumer identity, etc. But really, we're maybe entering a, a third era, which is, is going to be really taking hold for the next sort of five to 10 years. And I want to try and sort of spend 15, 20 minutes looking into what some of those trends may look like. So we, um, we, we spent uh, quite a bit of time with our um, cyber research community. We have sort of seven, 8,000 people in our, in our network, if you like, various different levels of um, practitioners within industry, within um, regulated industries like financial services and banking, retail, manufacturing. Um, and that's you know, people doing real work, if you like, within those organizations from an identity architecture, identity engineering, access management perspective, as well as the consultancy community as well. So whether that's the global integrators right the way through to boutique specialists, we've all been engaged in, in asking them anecdotal questions via social media and via newsletters and stuff to try and build out a bit of a body of knowledge, if you like, as to, as to what trends and what patterns and what standards are popular once you're dying off and i want to maybe try and share some of that with you today so first question and we asked this is back in the end of 2022 which was which identity component may die off this year in 2023 and picked some of the common ones things like saml uh, passwords um, on-premises directories and role-based access control we had 105 people respond to this question and 
quite close um, the results, as you can see there. The, the winner, um, the, the area which many organi organizations will perhaps look to kill off in 2023 will be on-premises directories. Now, clearly LDAP, Active Directory, um, Novell, lots of other enterprise directories available, they serve and have served a really important purpose over the last 15 to 20 years. But clearly we do now have a range of cloud-based directories. They're very stable, they're very mature, and they do provide a more cost-effective way um, at times to, to store both consumer and employee data. So that seems to be a big drive really for organizations moving to cloud directories, but clearly there are still some requirements which may well need um, uh, directory information to be still stored um, on premises, be that compliance, be that uh, the systems which are being integrated against the, those directories may uh, still exist in um, either on-premises uh, data centers or perhaps in, in private cloud. Um, style ecosystem. So I think there's definitely a, a, um, a pro and a con, if you like, as to as to where the um, uh, you know the end result of this possibly could be, whether uh, all directories will disappear or maybe this is just the start of a long decline of on-premises. But even cloud systems will need governance. They will need to um, have connectors to get data into them. Um, and once they are live, of course, they, they, they do still need to be maintained operationally with with sound um, sort of identity governance and administration processes there as well so I, I think the likes of saml and passwords again i think they're in a similar position i think they will also um start this this long decline of use perhaps um and role-based access control i think is still very much heavily used in the enterprise um, if if not plagued by things like role-based um, sort of um, explosion or role explosion and the the management and operational issues you often find with our back model so it'd be interesting to see where where this this goes i i do think there's a, a steady decline I, I i'm not sure they will be entirely killed off in the next year but um i think on-premises directories do seem to be um on a little bit of a downward trend um the next question we asked which was um essentially looking at it, do we really need to have a new job title called a chief identity officer? Um, and this uh, mini survey had 84 respondents and a resounding 61% um, said that they think we should have a chief identity officer. Now, clearly, I think this depends really whether we are talking about um, employee identity or consumer identity. There does seem to be a, a quite a, a big split between the two. And again, I think it really depends on perhaps who is currently responsible for the security landscape, the CISO, if one exists, or maybe the CIO perhaps, and how um, well enabled they are to understand the identity and access management landscape. Do they have the right, the right knowledge, tooling, metrics, architecture, information, etc. And I think if they do, that probably is enough for the time being. Certainly, we, we've done work at the CyberHub where we've done some virtual um, sort of advisory work with, with CISOs, helping them to uh, essentially come up to speed, really, with, with some of the complex identity challenges, understanding standards, design patterns, uh, things like passwordless, authorization, access control, cloud migrations, etc. So I think the, the, the CISO and CIO probably have the um, best position to understand identity and as long as they are enabled either through external advisory or perhaps via a competent part of the identity business that will probably maybe suffice for the time being there's some interesting anecdotes there you know if we are talking about consumer absolutely we need to have somebody in the board to represent this um, or perhaps really the CISO and the CIO probably are the best people to understand the identity landscape. But it will be interesting to see this emerge. I'm not aware of, of any uh, practitioners calling themselves yet the chief identity officer. Um, it may emerge, I suppose, over the coming years, but I think it just goes to show identity is, is vitally important now to the organizational business and security landscape. So I think having the identity conversation at the sea level is, uh, is the best result, I think. Um, switching a little bit to the technology 
uh, focus here briefly. And, and passwords, again, passwords are, you know, in, in the first um, poll there, we discussed this, maybe the steady decline of passwords, um, which I guess have been on the decline for since the 1970s, I guess. Um, but there are technologies now available to um, help us accelerate this migration. Things like FIDO2, WebAuthn, passkeys have, have become um, uh, popular, I guess, in the last 12 months or so, where we are leveraging a more cryptographic based way of authenticating using challenge response mechanisms, phishing resistance, um, perhaps being wrapped by a biometric to unlock um, private keys, etc. So I, I do think we, we have the tools and technologies to rid us of passwords. And I think we are just basically seeing the, the um, sort of nascent adoption here, where if we can deliver passwordless to a broad array of systems, on-prem, legacy cloud, APIs, etc., integrate more with those existing identity um, providers and single sign-on providers, focus on the desktop to cloud. I think over the next two to three years, we will see a mass adoption of passwordless technologies. And it looks like that will be wrapped by biometrics. And the poll on the right-hand side, uh, where we, we simply asked, what's your favorite biometric? Uh, 65 people responded and face recognition um, came out top there, just, just ahead of, of the fingerprint is the, I guess, the most common and acceptable way initially, obviously, to open your mobile device, but then essentially to, to unlock um, the, the downstream applications to, to release private keys to do things like passwordless authentication. So I think we're massively heading in this direction. We have the standards, we have great vendors who are delivering technology in this space. And I think now end user awareness is really calling for mass adoption to at last kill the password. Um, and I think for sure within the next two to three years, we will see some great progress in this area. Um, another more, I guess, conceptual um, topic, which is, has been one which um, we've been tracking a lot for the last year or so, is privacy. Um, now, if, if you do a, you know, a quick poll in, in any pub or conference and you say, are you concerned of privacy? People raise their hand and they are absolutely adamant. They care about their personal identifiable information. But I think, unfortunately, we all act quite irrationally when online on, on the Internet. We, we don't necessarily read all of the terms and conditions for every website we register to. Uh, we certainly don't um, uh, necessarily you know, prevent the sharing of some of our key uh, pieces of data and transactions. So there's a little bit of a conflict here between how we behave and, and how we, we want our services to behave. And I think clearly there's also a secondary conflict uh, between having a personalized service um, and having a very privacy enabled service. So for example, I want to have you know, retail recommendations or media, music, video, film recommendations, which are personalized to me and how um, I share my preferences and my choices, etc. But for that to take place, I really have to share quite a lot of information about myself, um, who I am, what I like, what I don't like, where I've been, etc., etc. So there's that constant conflict. And I think obviously we are now are seeing numerous different pieces of legislation in Europe, like the, the general data protection regulation, as well as things in, in, in North America as well, like the CCPA and, and other state level mandates, which are empowering the consumer to, to have more privacy preserving technologies in those services. So I think privacy is an interesting one. I think the two images there on the right are actually from Samsung and Apple, um, and they are clearly, uh, you know, they, they see privacy as part of their competitive strategy. They, they are using adverts um, to, to focus and amplify the privacy message. So that, that is, I think, that's hopefully quite a good thing, really, from a consumer perspective. And our survey was sim simply asking, would you pay extra for a service for privacy? And 79% of the respondents said yes, they would. So it's interesting if, if we will start to see um, not just compliance-led tick box use of data, but really privacy is, is a competitive differentiator and essentially allowing things like the consent and the, the safe distribution of our PII to a much broader ecosystem to deliver personalization, but in a way which is maybe perhaps pseudonymized and, and tokenized, et cetera. So I think privacy is an interesting one. I think we're definitely heading in the right direction. I think there are still some 
barriers to, to how both um, ourselves as consumers and the service providers are handling our sensitive data. Um, AI ML is, is a huge one. Um, I was at the RSA conference um, a few weeks ago in San Francisco, and it did seem to me that the uh, zero trust buzzword had simply been replaced by the AL, AI ML uh, buzzwords. Every organization has some sort of automation, um, certainly huge differences between automation, machine learning, and AI, and then all of the sort of large language models and, and new innovations that will happen this year with the likes of uh, chat gpt and others so we are seeing huge innovation here i think the, the the sort of zoom out moment really to me is is identity really becoming a big data problem um we are collecting more information at every part of the identity life cycle from authentication and proofing through to access control activity threat modeling threat analysis fraud identity governance and administration looking at entitlements roles permissions you know these are huge data collection exercises with vast data lakes and i think it's becoming very difficult for just the human to be able to analyze and maintain and respond to some of these areas um purely in a, in a manual fashion so i think we're starting to see automation appear in in all parts of identity and um, the question really was where is going to be the, the biggest impact it honestly it looks quite even here. I think fraud and bot detection just wins out there with 32% of the 53 votes. And perhaps maybe fraud is, you know, it's been driven by digital transformation. It's been driven by financial reward, etc. So I think there's probably maybe a slightly more incentivized view to apply automation there to essentially reduce the cost of fraud and identify bots identify bad behavior but i do think authentication you're looking at behaviors um i think iga where we can amplify it and you know, move away from from checkbox compliance and start to see more automation and exception and, and um sort of contextual based iga and i think risk analysis in general would benefit hugely from from some sort of automation so i think in honesty ai ml is, is going to apply to vast swathes of the identity platform maybe the next three to five years it will focus more on the authentication fraud side helping us identify bad behaviors helping us identify things like anomalous locations devices etc i think that probably is going to have the biggest benefit in the immediate term What do you think now? I mean, clearly that was a very, very, very sort of quick, quick overlay of, of some of the research areas that, that we've done. I, I certainly think there are some pretty obvious meta patterns. I think biometrics and passwords, um, um, or passwordless, I should say, would definitely become the de facto way of authenticating. I think we're all moving to some sort of central control plane model for things like authentication, risk, authorization, access control, policy-based access control. Having that in a in a centralized um, control plane, whether it's using things like graph as the underlying mechanism there. But I think we are seeing a centralization of control and of policy by design. That seems like it would be enhanced by artificial intelligence of some sort. I think on the consumer side, clearly privacy is a need from a compliance perspective. I think we're probably going to see that uh, be amplified a little bit more and focus on maybe privacy first as a competitive differentiator i think the, the the chief identity officer angle i think will probably be solved by improved identity metrics and, and this i really refer to how um, identity is measured how that is communicated to uh, maybe the cio or the CISO and other c-level um, executives talking about uh, identity wins identity success where to invest in identity technologies i think all of that uh, essentially can be improved by better metrics and better communication strategies within the enterprise. I think by design that it sort of helps with this chief identity style model where sea level essentially more informed about the identity landscape. And again, I think technology perspective, things like external authorization, I think things like um, identity threat detection and response, again, whether that's AI led 
or not, we'll, we'll certainly see. I think the, you know, we're clearly things like cloud first microservices, agility within our identity as well, may well be uh, hugely adopted in the next five years. And not to mention as well, things like decentralized identities and uh, self-sovereign and verifiable credentials. I think we're certainly seeing uh, the technology is there. I think we're starting to see uh, real production led use cases in those ecosystems. I think that will amplify, maybe not to the, the mass production adoption area, which we've seen other technologies. But again, I think that is something to keep an eye on as well. Now, clearly, predictions are always difficult to do. I think it's uh, it's, it's always important to, to, to leverage other voices when we're analyzing and looking at future predictions and looking at what may or may not have it. It's something we, we try and do at the Cyber Hub. We, we, we do surveys, we do we analyze patterns in sort of vendor investment and vendor use cases to try and provide a bit of a clarity there. And, and hopefully, at least that may give a little bit of a insight and maybe you know, a few ideas to take back into your organizations to maybe help understand where spending or where some of the projects for identity may exist over the next three to five years. I think more importantly, identity is now hugely foundational to business success. It's empowering vast majority of cybersecurity technologies. I think as well, it's also empowering many digital transformation initiatives through uh, consumer identity and uh, the monetization of data and others. I think unfortunately that then drives a huge array of uh, identity threat into the organization as well, which is why we're starting to see emerging patterns around identity threat detection and response. But hopefully that gives a little bit of a sort of 20 minute snapshot into what may happen over the next five years. And feel free to, to reach out to me directly at the cyberhut.com to hear your stories of um, what you think may or may not happen um, in the next five years or so. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for listening and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference.